I highly recommend you print out each name of the required document on sticker paper labels. This is how you show the admissions committee that you are well prepared and ultimately can give them a good first impression. Thanks for checking into Studying Korea Dream. I'm your K educator, Mr. College Concierge. Today, I'm going to go over the 2021 GKS application guidelines for undergraduate degrees. It's about 20 pages long, and I've seen so many students having a hard time understanding all of the information on their own. So, in today's video, I'm going to show you what is important and what you need to remember from the guidelines so that you can well prepare for the coming 2022 GKS application for undergraduates. After you watch this video, I'm certain that you will be more confident in preparing for the 2022 GKS for undergrads. Before you watch this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. It will definitely help me keep making informative videos for you. Alright, now let's take a look at the application guidelines with me one by one. 2-1 on page 2. Available program. BA program consists of a one-year Korean language program and four-year undergraduate degree program. So it's a total of a five-year program. An AA program consists of a one-year Korean language program and two to three-year associate degree program. So it's a total of a three to four-year program. 2-2 Total number of expected grannies. As you see the quota allocated for each application track in the middle of page 2, there are two tracks, embassy track and university track. What's important here is you can only choose one track to apply. And let's take a closer look at the embassy track first. As you see the embassy track quota for general applicants, only one to three applicants are selected on average in each country. This quota is much smaller than the one for graduate degrees. Therefore, it's extra crucial for undergrad applicants to approach with some successful strategies to increase your chances of being selected. I already gave you some advice and recommendation throughout my other videos. If you're curious, watch the entire videos. On page 3, embassy track applicants must submit their documents to their local Korean embassy. For example, even if you're from India living in Indonesia, you cannot submit your documents to the Korean embassy in Indonesia. Since you're an Indian citizen, you must submit your documents to the Korean embassy in India. And there are type A and type B universities. Please refer to 3-1 on page 5, Available Universities. For embassy track applicants, they must choose three universities from the available universities. But make sure to select at least one from Type B universities. Meaning, you can choose all three universities from Type B. On page 4, for university track applicants, they must choose only one university and submit their applications to the university they choose directly. However, don't forget, university track is for either natural science and engineering majors in regional universities or AA degree program applicants. Many of you have asked me where you can find majors that Korean universities offer for GKS. Please read 3-2 available fields of study carefully on page 5 and 6. On page 6, number 4, legibility. Applicants must not be a Korean citizen and must be 24 years old or younger to apply for the GKSU programs. And this is very important, so please listen up. If you're expected to graduate from high school, when you apply for GKS, you must submit a Certificate of Expected Graduation 
issued by your high school. And you must submit your official high school diploma and transcripts by March 1st, 2023 at the very latest. If not, you will forfeit your status as a GKS scholar. On page 7, 4-4, Grades, your CGPA must be 80% or above to apply for BA programs. And for AA programs, your CGPA must be 75% or above to apply. And if your transcripts do not include information on your CGPA, then you must submit an official document issued by your high school, not university, this must be a typo, describing your grading system. From here, I've received so many requests from you that your school does not issue those documents. Well, I'm sorry, but if your school cannot, I'm afraid I can't help you. Your school might have never issued it, but it can be part of a life lesson for you to persuade them to establish a new system. You must tell yourself that you're ready to ultimately speak to the principal or school head about it. Good luck! Let's take a look at 4-7 Preference on page 8. As I already told you in my other videos, if you have a topic level 3 or above, you'll be given an extra 10% points of the total marks during the evaluation. Don't you think you should study Korean and achieve a topic level 3, at least? If I were you, I would do everything possible to increase my chance of being selected as a GKS scholar. But, if you really think you can make it, then here's plan B. Aim for an official English test score, such as TOEFL and IELTS. If you have a value 1, the GKS guidelines don't mention how many extra points you'll get, but you'll be preferred. Now, let's take a look at number 5, Required Documents. In my opinion, this part is the most important one. But many of you are very confused and have asked me a lot about it. Therefore, let me paraphrase what you need to remember here. 5-1, List of Required Documents. You must prepare these documents in the order of the checklist. 5-2. Note for all applicants. All documents must be written in either Korean or English. Or, you must submit a Korean or English translation copy notarized by a notary public. All documents must be original, but if you plan to submit photocopies, it must be notarized or apostilled, or confirmed by a Korean consular. See? There are three options, so choose one if you don't submit original copies. Documents must be submitted in the order of the checklist on the first page of the application forms. Each document must be numbered and labeled in the top right corner. From here, I highly recommend you print out each name of the required document on sticker paper labels. This is how you show the admissions committee that you're well prepared and ultimately can give them a good first impression. You must submit two letters of recommendation written by those who can prove your academic abilities. That means you should ask teachers who you're close with to write it for you. And the letters must be sealed and signed. If not, it will be considered invalid. For awards and certificates of accomplishments, photocopies are acceptable. To prove you and your family's citizenship, the easiest way is to submit you and your family's passport copies because it doesn't have to be notarized. 5-3 Embassy Track Applicants You must submit one set of original copies of your application and three sets of photocopies. You might ask me here about what you can do with your letters of recommendation because they are sealed. Then just ask each recommender to give you four sealed and signed letters of recommendation. 
and if you plan to submit notarized copies of your application, just get one set of your application notarized, not all four sets of your application. You can just make three copies of your notarized application documents. Don't waste your money getting everything notarized. Lastly, for university track applicants, just submit one set of original copies or notarized photocopies. For the rest of the guidelines, it's repetitive from the previous ones I have already covered, or it's made up of information you can easily understand. So, please read it casually. I hope today's video helps you to prepare required documents completely. And please remember, each Korean embassy and university sets an application deadline. So, you should carefully look at their notice. You can find their websites and contact information on the Studying Korea website where you can find the available fields of study file. If you forgot, please refer to page 5 and 6 of the GKS guidelines. Thanks for watching. Now, enjoy your stay.